Today we're going to talk about a topic that I think is very important for us to understand in Excel, and that is the difference between relative and absolute cell references. First off, understand this topic only comes into play when you need to copy a formula. If you write a formula and you don't need to copy it anywhere else, then you don't need to worry about relative and absolute cell references. But usually we're going to write a formula that we need to copy somewhere else, and that's when it's going to be important for us to understand the difference between a relative and absolute cell reference so we can then copy our formulas from one cell to the other. Let's start with an example. In cell A1, let's type in sales tax rate. And I'll make that column a little bit wider. And we'll say we're going to use the 5% sales tax rate. Below that, we are going to set up an area to record my sales. Now, let's assume that we are selling fruit today. OK, so first off, we're going to show the item. Then we're going to show the price. And then we're going to show the quantity sold. So I'm going to go back to A4 and let's sell some apples and let's let them be 25 cents and let's sell 100 of them. Okay, then we'd sell bananas and they're going for 20 cents each. I don't really grocery shop, but anyway, let's hope this is reasonable and let's sell 50 of those. Let's sell some pineapple. And those are a dollar and fifty cents each, and I'm going to sell thirty of those. And finally, let's sell some oranges, and those are fifty cents each, and I'm going to sell eighty of those. What we'd like to do right now is to figure our total sales. So in D3, I'm going to type in the word sales, and I'm going to write a formula that will calculate the total amount that I'm getting for selling my apples. My formula would be a simple equals B4 times C4. I'm going to press enter and it calculates $25. Now, instead of writing that formula separately in D5, D6, and D7, I'd like to take that formula and copy it down. You may recall there are a number of ways to copy. If I am copying to adjacent cells, my easiest way is to double click the fill handle and it will copy that formula down as far as it thinks it needs to go. Now notice what happened. If you were in D4, my formula said equals B4 times C4. When we copied it down a row, the B4 became a B5 and the C4 became a C5. If we copied it down one more row, the B4 became a B6, the C4 became a C6. Do you notice what's happening? The row is incrementing. It is going up as we copy. That is because the cell references in my original formula were relative. They were relative. So let's type down here a few words that will matter to us. A relative cell reference will change when the formula is copied. Okay. So we just saw that illustrated. These are relative cell references. The way we know that they're relative cell references is that they do not have dollar signs in them. Okay. To make something absolute, we have to put dollar signs in it. No dollar signs right now tells me that these are relative cell references, which means they change as I copied them down. And that was fine because that's what I wanted them to do right now. Let's give another example of this. I'm going to go to C8 and write a formula which will add up the total quantity of the items that I sold. My easiest way to do that is using the auto sum icon. And my function says equal sum C4 to C7. Well, what if I'd like to also know the total amount of my sales? I would like to take this formula that I've just inserted into C8, copy it over to D8. I can do that. I can grab the fill handle, drag it over to the right, and notice what's happened. Originally, we were summing from C4 through C7. Now, when I copied it one column to the right, the column incremented, and now it is copying from D4 through D7. Again, that's another example of a relative cell reference because we had no dollar signs inserted right there. And that's what we wanted it to do. 
when I copied that formula over to D8, I wanted it to add up to D4 through D7. Okay, so I wanted it to change. That's good. Let's come next, though, into um, cell E3 and type in sales tax. Now, I need to write a formula in E4 that will calculate the amount of sales tax that applies to the sales of my apples. My formula would be equals the amount of the sales, which is D4, times my sales tax rate, which is B1. Calculates a dollar and 25 cents, which is 5% of $25. That works fine. Well, let's take that formula and copy it down. And let's see how that works. Didn't work too well, did it? Why didn't it work well? Well, the problem is one of relative absolute. All right. So notice what happened. When we copied our formula from E4 down to E5, what happened? Instead of looking at D4 and multiplying it by the rate, it's looking at D5. Well, that's good. We did want the D4 to change to become D5 when we copied it down. But notice what else has changed. Now, instead of looking at B1, when I copied the formula down a row, it's now looking at B2, which has nothing in it. Hence, it's getting the zero. Let's look at one more. When we copied it down to the third row, all right, it now says equals D6. That's good. No problem there. Times B3. Well, we really didn't want it looking at B3, did it? We wanted it still to look at B1. So what we needed to do in this original formula was we needed to lock down the B1 so that when we copy this formula, it will always look at B1. It will not look at B2, B3, B4. If we copy it to the right or left, it's not going to look at um, C1 or D1 or anything else. The easiest way to lock that down is if I come here and click between the B and the 1, I can press F4 on my keyboard. Now notice what happens. It puts two dollar signs in. A dollar sign before the B and a dollar sign before the 1. That means that the row is absolute and the column is absolute. I can copy it left, right, up, down, and it will always refer to B1. Now you can type in those dollar signs just as easy as I press my F4 key. I'm just in the habit of doing that. I do want you to notice what happens if I press that F4 key again. Now I have B dollar 1. There's not a dollar sign in front of the B, which means that my column is relative. If I copy this formula left to right, the B is going to change. But I can copy it up and down. There's a dollar sign in front of the 1. The 1 will not change. I'm going to press F4 again, and I get dollar B 1. The dollar sign is in front of the column. What does that mean? If I copy it left to right, it's always going to keep the column B. There is not a dollar sign in front of the 1. What does that mean? If I copy it up or down, that's going to change. So I've locked down the B, but I haven't locked down the 1. If I press F4 one more time, you see I have no dollar signs at all. I simply have B1, meaning nothing is locked down. If I copy it left, right, up, down, it is going to change. 99% of the time for what we're doing, we'll want our cell references either to be just absolute or just relative. The ones where we had a dollar B and then a 1, or a B dollar one. Both of those are examples of what we call mixed cell references and we really, I don't believe, are going to have to cover those. So I'm going to stick right now to talking about simply relative and simply absolute. I'm going to leave this one just the way it is now. I have a dollar sign in front of the B, a dollar sign in front of the one. Again, I press the F4 key when I was clicked between the B and the one. You can simply type in the dollar signs. It's perfectly fine also. Now let's go back. I pressed enter. I'm going to go back to cell E4. Let me copy it again. Again, double click the fill handle, bottom right corner, and notice what happens. As I copied it down, my D4 did what? Became D5, and became D6, and became D7, which is what we'd want it to do. But what happened to my B1 in the formula? It stayed B1, which is just what I wanted it to do. So let's add another note down here. An absolute cell reference will not change when the formula is copied. Use dollar signs to make a cell reference absolute. We could continue this. I'm not worried about formatting now. What if we wanted to know our total sales? The total sales for apples would be the sales plus the sales tax, so it could be equals D4 plus E4. 
Let's see, I'm going to copy that one down. Did I need anything to be absolute in this case? No, because when I copied it down a row, I want it to be equals D5 plus E5, and I want it then to be D6 plus E6. I wanted everything to be relative in that particular case. So the only time we have to concern ourselves with this issue of relative and absolute cell references is if I'm going to copy the formula. If I am not going to copy the formula, I don't need to worry about it. Now you may think, well, how about back when we did these for column E? I could have, what if I had done it like this? I had left, left it being relative, copied it down, okay? But I could have come back here and fixed each one of these, right? Um, let's see, I could manually fix each one of those. And you're right, we could have done that because our example only had four items in it. How about if we had 40 or 400 or 4,000 or 40,000? We would not be able to do that. So instead, we have to understand the correct way to fix it so we can copy that down as far as we need. So again, making the B1 absolute would allow me to copy that anywhere that I might need to do so. So the difference between an absolute and relative cell reference is that a relative cell reference will change when the formula is copied. If I copy it down a row, the row number is going to increment. If I copy it um, a column to the right, the column is going to increment. An absolute cell reference will not change when that formula is copied. We are locking it down, locking it down. And the way we make a cell reference absolute is you can either use the F4 key or you can simply type in the dollar sign. Remember though that we lock down the column separate from the row. In our cases, we are really just going to be working with completely relative references and completely absolute references, which would require that we put a dollar sign in front of the column and also then a dollar sign in front of the row. There are such things as mixed references where the row will change and the column won't and vice versa. So I hope this may, has made things absolutely clear. The difference between relative and absolute cell references will be very important to you as you complete your projects and do anything in Excel. Let me make one more point. That is, if you write a formula, and that formula works when you write it, but then when you go to copy that formula somewhere else, you find that it doesn't work, then the odds are great that the reason it is not working has to do with this relative or absolute issue. Again, let me show you this one one more time. Let's suppose this was my formula. Every cell reference in a formula by default is relative. That was my original formula, equals D4 times B1. Again, we saw when we copied it down that it did not work. So the formula worked when I wrote it, but when I copied it down, it did not work. That should be a red flag to you that there is probably something in that cell that is relative that should be absolute. Can't guarantee that's a problem, but very often it is. Every cell reference is relative by default. Sometimes they need to be changed to be made absolute. So if you keep that in mind, if the formula works when you write it, but not when you copy it down, most likely you have an issue with relative or absolute. And most likely the issue is probably that something in that formula is relative and it should be absolute. Again, I go back in, I change this, I make this absolute, I copy it down, it'll work just fine. So when you write the formula, if it works, but it doesn't work when you copy it, go back and look at all the individual cell references in that formula and decide, when I copy this formula, do I want that item to change? If so, it should be relative, have no dollar signs. Or do I want that cell reference to always be looking at this same exact cell? If that is the case, you need to make that cell reference be absolute by putting your dollar signs in in front of the row and also in front of the column.